Hi folks, Lance from Runtime. Nice cup of tea in the morning? Can't beat a nice cup of tea in the morning, eh? So today I'm going to be demonstrating the RT Thread Studio IDE and the RTOS that they provide. They provide two different types of RTOS, the Nano and the full-fledged RTOS. I'm going to be demonstrating the full-fledged RTOS, which has a command line shell, which allows you to do debugging of the kernel and the application that you've built that will run on top of the kernel. So the actual kernel will be running on a development board. In this case, it's the SDM 32429i board, which is here. And you can see it's actually just running there right now. You can see the flashing LED. I'm gonna be running the code on here. And what I'm gonna to demonstrate to you guys is how quickly you can go from their website, download their app, install it on your Windows machine, get it up and running, configure the board support packages for your development board. There's a whole swag that they have for different types of development boards. Then build the actual project itself, compile it, link it, create an executable, download it, flash it onto the target, bring up the terminal and start debugging the actual application and the kernel. I'm going to show you how quickly you can do that and that's what impresses me more than anything else about this particular piece of software is how quickly you can get up and running and start writing code for your target so here we go the installation part was pretty straightforward you just go to their website download it put into google rt thread bang wallop there it is comes up straight away download it already did that it will install it where you have to log into their website and get registered as a user in order to use the studio so i've already done that then it boots me up into the the rt thread studio uh, and then this is all the development tools that you need it's using gnu tools and gnu compiler you can use other compilers as well with this but i'm just going with the gnu tools which they're free and they're bundled in with this IDE and development environment and then it brings you to this splash screen it's really nice actually what they've done here they've given you a video course which is awesome so there's a whole swag of videos and how to do a quick start how to how to create your first project and these videos are really really good um, I suggest you watch them I think it's a great little feature that they've added here and it gives you some recent news as well which is awesome there's a documentation center here the fundamentals of the operating system you know where the kernel sits in relation to the rest of the modules that they have bundled in it's got the artos down here you got the different cpus and mcus that they support including risk v they've got a security framework and then you've got all these other components um, mostly device drivers on top of the kernel the communication protocols up here and then, of course, on this side, you've got the different uh, fundamentals of the kernel, you've kernel porting, so you can port that to different MCUs. It's well documented. There's some grammar and spelling mistakes in this, but hey, look, you know, translation might not be perfect, but hey, it's free. Give it a go. The first thing you do is you got to go to here, which is the SDK manager. This is very, very important that you do this as a first step because here is where you configure your board support packages and you select your MCUs. So here is where you select the RTOS, the, the source code. I would normally select the latest here and I've already done that. You can see it's all installed. I've got all the different versions here. The latest one as well. So that's the latest. I suggest you click that and we'll download it and install it. And then, of course, you've got the different uh, board support packages for the different microcontrollers and we're obviously using the and you can see that using the S the stm32 f4 which is already installed and, and then of course you got to go and pick your particular board is what i want to do is test the actual contact switch the task switching characteristics of this rtos to see how deterministic it really is and compared to other RTOSs out there and we'll do a little bit of a comparison so that's what you do you go in here you pick your board and also don't forget this the debugger support package is very very important installed I recommend you install them all it doesn't do any harm so here's where you go and select a project now we're gonna select not the nano project because that's a small version of the RTOS we're gonna go the full hog and we're gonna select an RTOS project pick the name and project all right you go and select the rtos i've got all these different selections i'm going to select the latest one the, the vendor in this case stm series i'm going to select the stm 32f4 which is what mine is and of course it's got all these libraries in here and the one that i have is this one here the f229 that's the M mcu and it's going to be a software port we're going to do software or jtag we're not going to do jtag we're going to be software port because we're talking through this talk through 
STM link here. You can also go this way. Um, so that's it if you wanted to go that way or you just go this way and just select the board that you want. In this case, I'm going to go for the discovery board. It brings it up and it does all the configuration for you. It shows you what it is. It even shows you a price. You can go and buy it if you want here as well, which is awesome. I really like the way they've done this. And of course, the board support package is automatically selected. And then, of course, you finish. It's going to go and create the project. Well, it's going to set up the basic LED flashing program that is like hollow wall for the embedded world. Is In normal programming, you would create a program which says hello world. For the embedded world, we normally flash an LED, and this is what it's going to do. It's going to produce that code for you, and you can then run that code on this target. So we're going to go through that right away. And the reason it's taking so long is because it's actually configuring a full RTOS installation. This is going to be downloaded into your target. I mean, the actual program itself, which is the LED flashing, is a very small part of what this is now creating. We're going to go and look at the actual uh, application here. I'm going to go to main and of course there it is that's the program it's very very simple we got to compile our program so we go up here and we build our program it's going to build the program now and it's not going to take very long because it's a fairly simple program but there you go it's going to compile link all of the libraries and it's going to create an executable which can be downloaded into the target which i'll show you in a second and it's done it look it's done it it's only took 19 seconds not a long time at all 19 seconds now what we want to do is we want to now download it so we're going to flash it so here it goes and it's going to software reset it's going to download it bang it's done it's running on the target now so you can see that it's running on the target and we can open up a terminal now and it should show us there it is it shows us that the kernel is now running now remember that program i was showing you that's only a small part that's just one of the processes this is actually giving you a shell into the rtar so we can actually just type in help and it gives you a whole list of commands that you can run from the console via the serial port you can control the RTOS that's running on the target now. And you can do things like you can list the thread. So if you type in the command list underscore thread, it should give you the threads that are running. And you can see those are the suspended thread. That's what the thread's running. It's only consuming 15% of the stack size. And, uh, and one of them is suspended. The main one is suspended. And this one is in ready state. There's your shell. There's your idle state. And the main one is suspended right now. What else can we show you? We can show you the memory. So if you type in free, shows you what the memory is. You can actually do a SD RAM test as well. You can do that. Just type that in like that. And it's doing a test and it's verifying the data and it's done. So it's pretty straightforward. We'll do help again just to list the commands. So you can do things like list the, the message queue. You can list the memory heap in the system. So let's have a look at the list of the memory heap and the mem heap. Let's see what have we got here. There you go. There's the heap. And um, you can show the memory use in the system. Let's have a look at that. Free. There you go. So it's very, very simple to bring up. It's so I, what I like about this whole environment, it is so easy to run this kernel up. Now, obviously, we're running a very simple program. So just wanted to give you guys a quick glimpse into RT Thread Studio and a very simple um, demonstration of the RTOS. This is the full version of the RTOS, not the nano version, because the nano version won't have this functionality. In the next video, I will show you a more sophisticated program that will uh, consist of multiple processes or multiple tasks talking to one another. So folks, hope you enjoyed that little demonstration of RT Thread Studio. Hope it was educational. Let me know what your thoughts are. And by the way, if you're an engineer, please connect with me on LinkedIn. We might be able to help you with some amazing opportunities that we have with our clients are all around the world and if you're a client if you're looking to hire engineers maybe you want to look us up anyway great to chat with you see you in the next one cheers